What up guys, Cyril Zuma here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, please subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you can receive more videos just like this one here. If you've been here before, well, welcome back. Today, I'll be talking to you guys about how to price yourself as a photographer in 2020. Learning how to price yourself as a photographer is something that we tend to leave for later in our careers as photographers and I think that works to our disadvantage. As a young photographer, you never really know whether you are outpricing yourself or undercharging. The business of photography is booming with hobbyists and amateur photographers eager to impress. How do you as a photographer maintain a solid steady career while adding value to your clients? The first thing we must admit though is that photography is considered a luxury. Not everybody can afford a photographer whenever they please like doing it. Part of your job as a photographer is to give insights and ultimately make money for your clients while adding value at the same time. So you've decided now what type of photography you want to do, whether it be portrait, whether it be fashion, whatever it may be. And now you don't know how to price yourself and you know, you get, you get in client requests and in fact, you probably, as I said, you probably don't even know whether you're undercharging or overcharging. I'm really going to help you and give you tips that I've used in the past that help me price myself a little bit better. When pricing your work, you need to take into fact these things. You need to take into fact your base costs. Your base costs are things like your rent, your equipment, your insurance. These costs never change at any time. Look, we need to live. So therefore, you need to think about these things in mind when charging your clients. You cannot just go out and be charging 500 Rand while your bills are piling up and they're different. You have many other things that you pay for, as I mentioned, from insurance to cameras to equipment, whatever it may be. You need to account for these base costs before you even come up with a total price of how to price per hour or how to price for projects. Once you know your base costs, the next things to calculate are your cost of labor and time. Now, this one can be very difficult, but I think this is very important for you guys to understand how to break down your cost of labor and time. So with your cost of labor and time, you need to think of things like, the minute the client contacts you, you need to think of things like, okay, how many emails am I sending to the, to the client? Am I traveling to client back and forth? So you need to think post-production, traveling to fetch equipment, traveling to, to go find something somewhere else. You need to account for all of those things. Then the other things you need to account for are, during the shoot, while you're shooting, that is your time. You need to account for that. So when I look at my rate, I look at my rate and I say, okay, cool, my rate is 1,600 Rand an hour. That's how much I charge while during the shoot. And then I add on things like post-production. Post-production is traveling back home, sending the client the photos and also storage. I account for all those things to make sure that I come up with a total value of my cost of labor and time. Pro tip, do some research on what the industry standard rates are. Ask other photographers what they're charging at the moment. Ask around and go look at people's websites. The one trick that I do is I go to people's website and I see how much they are charging. It doesn't mean that I must charge the same thing because you must understand where your journey, where you are in your journey in your photography. When you're starting out in photography, you cannot be charging 10,000 Rand. Look, some people do do it and it works for them. But if you want a solid, steady career where you are adding value to clients, you need to make sure that you, you know, you're charging according to the amount of work that you can put in. So do yourself a favor, do some research on what other photographers are charging at the moment. I'm going to put a link below on the description of a website you can go to to actually check out some industry standard rates for South Africa. The next thing you need to account for is copyright and usage. Now, this is a very difficult conversation because the lines are very blurred, specifically in South Africa. In the US and other countries, the lines are very different. The, you know, in South Africa, the law states that whoever paid for the photo, the photo belongs to them. However, I think as a photographer, you need to not assume that the photo is only going on Instagram and actually ask your clients where photos are being used. I've seen instances where, you know, you actually get booked for a shoot to do a fashion shoot and your understanding is this is going to go on um, on Instagram and it's probably just might go on a website, but you start seeing your photos on billboards. Now you need to make sure that you own the photos at all times. Don't again, don't assume that your photos are just going on Instagram. The best way to set yourself up for this is have a contract up front. Write your contract to your clients saying that the photos belong to you and then find a way in between where you guys can work out a way so that you also have rights of the photos. And that way you can be able to utilize your photos not only just for whatever shoot you were doing or whatever campaign you were doing, but for other purposes. 
So copyright and usage is super important. You already know what your base costs are. You already know your cost of labor. You've taken the photos. Now what with your photos? You need to be able to control your photos and how you distribute your photos in the future. Pricing is one way to win your clients. However, I think there's another thing we need to look at. You need to add value to your clients, guys. And again, I'll go on. The one way that I add value to my clients is I teach them on industry insights. What's happening in their industry? I look at their competition. What is their competition doing? So for arguments like I've got a telecommunications company, you know, that's got other companies that are doing cool and amazing things. But because they're new in the space, they don't really know what they're doing. They do know that they want cool content and stuff going on, you know, and cool pictures, cool videos on their websites, on, on their pamphlets and such. So the one thing I do is educate them and look at their competition, what they're doing and see how we can replicate it and make it even 10 times better. You are the expert. The client sees you as an expert in all of this. So your pricing should also reflect such things. You need to be adding value more than just your pricing. That's one way to win your clients. But adding value is one sure way that your clients can book you on a retainer for a longer period. Well, thank you guys. Those were my tips on how to price yourself as a photographer in 2020. Number one, make sure that you calculate your base costs. You know what you are. Your base costs are your things like your rent, your insurance. Number two, you also need to calculate your cost of your labor. The cost of your labor is you need to look at things like traveling back and forth to hire equipment, the cost of equipment during the shoot, sending photos to clients, and the storage. And then the next thing you need to look at is copyright and usage. So you've taken all the amazing photos for your clients, but you need rights to your photos. You need to be able to own the photos as much as possible. So make sure that you draft a contract upfront and have a negotiation with your clients. You know, in the past, I've seen my clients have said, it's okay. You know, we understand. We just want to use it for this campaign. And after that, it's all yours. So make sure that you have a chat to your clients. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Again, those are my tips. Happy shooting. And if you've got any questions, please just drop them in the, in the comments below. And I will answer any question that you guys have. Till next time. It's been amazing, it's been wonderful. Go out there, price yourself a bit better. Your work is worth more. Till next time, goodbye.